What is mobile learning? And can we exploit some of the unique features of mobile devices, like iPad, to enhance and even to transform the experience of learners in our schools? This short presentation overviews how the IPAC framework addresses those issues. And these are the kind of questions academics and practitioners have considered seriously over the past 10 years since the introduction of mobile phones and more recently in 2010, the iPad. In 2012, our curiosity as academics led us to review over 30 peer-reviewed articles or studies of mobile learning in order to identify what we felt would be the unique features and affordances that mobile technologies promise for education. And we describe these as the signature pedagogies of mobile devices. In our paper, published in 2012, we identified three major categories, which we refer to as constructs. These constructs are represented in the triangle, with the idea of time and space at the centre, since mobile devices seem to enable learners to transcend some of the traditional boundaries associated with time and space, meaning they no longer have to be in a fixed place or at a fixed time to undertake learning. In terms of the framework, the three constructs we identified are collaboration, personalisation and authenticity. And what we're looking at here are word clouds associated with the first of these constructs, which is collaboration. And these are the terms we identified in our literature review which includes things such as conversation, data sharing, social interactivity, exchanging ideas. The next construct is authenticity, and this covers terms such as participation, situatedness, contextualization, task, and the tools that learners use. And the third construct is personalization, which includes ideas such as agency, the amount of choice and self-regulation that learners have, and the extent to which learning is customised. Taken together, they represent the three main constructs of the IPAC framework. But for each of the main constructs, we also identified sub-constructs, and in the case of collaboration, those sub-constructs included data sharing and conversation. Data sharing, the ability to actually create items such as a movie or an animation using a mobile device and then the ability to share it with other learners. And conversation, the ability to engage in talk, both face-to-face -face and virtual, mediated through the mobile device. In the second category, we examined personalisation and the sub-constructs for personalisation were identified as customization and agency. Customization being the ability of mobile devices to individualize and to customize the learning experience, and agency being the, the freedom and the choices that learners have when they have access to a mobile device. So, for example, the freedom to choose where they want to learn, when they want to learn, and how they want to learn. And in the case of the authenticity construct, we identified three sub-constructs, these being the task, the tool, and the extent to which the learning is set in. So the task and the tool are related to how learners can use their mobile devices to undertake activities that are more authentic and realistic using apps that are more professional. And the setting relates to the extent to which learning can be situated in contexts which are, again, more, ex uh, more professional and more realistic. And also, contexts that allow the learner to move beyond formal bounded spaces, such as field trips and visits to, ex uh, to museums. Taken together, these three constructs and the sub-constructs which we've explained form the IPAC framework. And this framework will be used extensively throughout this book and course to help you 
focus and to frame a research topic that is pedagogically sound.